It's dark down here. Yeah. You've made yourselves over to Westwall. Um, have I met some ranger dude from the army on the way? He was dropping off into the some of the southern, the northern side of Moonshadow. You Magnus. had Magnus, indeed. You had found um, Magnus Willow. You had found, upon arriving and crossing the river in your haphazard fashion, you had found the signs of a camp, I believe. And the pegs for where oxen or donkey or horse could be pegged up. Yes, no we, we found a, an em empty cart that looked as though it had been emptied. And yeah, and the, the and people had travelled across the river, across a rather dangerous crossing. And on the other side of the river, there was a broken tower amongst these fairly huge stones. And upon shifting or upon finding and seeing the the evidence of one of these stones being recently shifted, it on it um, revealed a spiral staircase downwards. You had descended, noticing pictographs on the walls depicting some sort of pointy-eared, slender race um, holding back, surrounding some giant circle in the ground with all their, the, the um, row of spearmen surrounding this in the depiction, pointing their spears down and a group of dark, pointy-eared, slender people trying to fight their way up. Um, I think that's where we left it. I don't know if there's any other uh, I've got something written. You found, found a room a with bed scrolls. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. We, we, we found a room that looked like people had been sleeping in it, but the beds were, were neatly made and abandoned. Scrolls yes, and rubbing. Yeah. Was, Sorry. There was um, evidence of that there, and the scrolls and rubbings would have been just the scroll, uh, the rubbings of the descent. The students. Yes. On the way down, yeah. Um, and I believe we ended it on, we rounded a corner to a hallway with a door at the end of it, and that was the end of it, guys. After those yeah. rooms. So, having prepared yourself, I don't think it was that late in the day. I think it was kind of late afternoon. Mm. But we are late summer, so this, you're not expecting the sun to set till seven or eight. Mm. And it's, say, four or five now. There's no sun down here, though. Exactly. Um, can people just remind me of light sources? Dark vision. Uh, torch. <laughs> oh, I cast light Rachel on something cast. someone was holding. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. You, you can light on believe, whoever yeah. went first. Sigurd, Sigurd was holding something with light cast on it, I think, or no, it was my short sword, I believe. Yeah. And just to say, also, um, if armor was stripped, it's been now put back on. Well, it wasn't okay. stripped. That was because of half our difficulties. Oh yeah, it's Sigurd. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sigurd Sigurd actually, take his after fucking yep. Quintus went swimming, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just needed a laugh. I wasn't going to drown as well. Fuck that. You get a m minus one to dex because your arm is all rusty now, so. Don't be silly. <laughs> yeah, it takes a day or two to rust. Yeah. Um. Okay, so the corridor leads down out from these kind of antechambers in, uh, towards a great old rotten iron-clad wooden door to the end. It's only about 20 feet down the corridor. This... Um, like I said, the this, the transition of stone from above to down here is different. Mm. And upon um, upon opening the door and seeing this large chamber in front of you, the stone reminds you um, of some of the stonework you you've seen around Stonewall in your few times you've visited there. It's a more whitish granite stone, different again than the, than the two types you've seen. So built by dwarves? Can I can well, I see if I recognize dwarven manufacturing the stone stones? wall certainly was a, hmm. um, a, a dwarven construction or a dwarven contracted construction, if nothing else. Um, and that's the stone that they have in the valleys around there. The more yellowish stone that... Um, 
the huge wall was constructed out um, outside of this, uh, whatever you might call it, dungeon, was uh, was very, I think I remember saying it was very kind of haphazard. It wasn't like precision stuff, and it, but it also was very old. You can give us a roll on something. Well, it's given that I've, I've investigated be... these runes in the, in the past, I figure it, it can do history. And runes if... like them, yeah. yeah. It's a history check. See if it looks familiar. Uh, what is my history? Uh, oh, plus five. 20. No, this white stone seems a little different. Oh. Um, yeah. You have, however, seen it in other runes up around these mountains. You okay. can certainly say it's not dwarven. Uh, it's a lot smoother, and it looks to be cut with a lot more precision. Although quite a few of the larger paving stones have been chipped and cracked over the years. It's not quite marble, but it's that kind of dense, Can heavy stone. Not, so, stone work? not such porous. Well, to the best of your knowledge, most of the elven kingdoms in... Um, kingdoms? Enclaves in... Redania are the main elven stronghold is there's uh, elven enclaves in the icy pines to the south there's plenty of forest elves in the moonshadow forest and then there's some out in crimson heart and some of those far north in the mountains but they don't tend to construct with stone mm. not as a whole okay um the room itself is about 70 or 80 feet wide, hundreds of feet long. It's one large room that your light doesn't even reach the far end of. Maybe just hints of a wall at the far end. More than 100 feet away. It's hard to tell. There's the sound of, there's a smell of fungus and... Not rot, but oh just God, no. dampness. Um, and there's a squeak of something, rats, bats, something like that around. There's also a fucking hell ping. There's also a very noticeable draft now that the door has been opened. And funnily enough, it seems to be coming when the when the, it it's coming into it's coming into your face. Yeah, it, it's blowing past you up the way you came, and it slams the door shut behind you. And then the draft seems to lay off a little. Calm down. Look, that hasn't sailed behind us, Quintus. Heck it. It hasn't. It's still... It's ill-fitted only because of its age. It would have been... Oh, good boss. Yeah. Bit of a through draft. Oh, yes, we... Yeah. That means there's another way in, or another way out. We've never seen a cave like this before. Like this a, is all worked stone. It's like a great hole. Yeah, more mm. like that than a cave. Okay, yeah. Although standing what? into it and holding up your torch or your sword with the light on it, you can start to see a bit more detail. And indeed, there is little enclaves of bats and um, perched on the on the ceiling rats and whatnot scurry away. There are broken um, and tipped uh, flagstones. There's off to your right about 20 feet, there seems to be a flagstone that's been up earth. And um, it seems that something quite large is dug up from under it. Uh -oh. Also, off to the right hand side, about halfway down, the wall seems different. It looks like a section of it, about 60 feet in length, has sunken on its foundations. So you have, yeah, the foundations have sunk for 60 feet, and therefore the bricks that are on top of that 60 feet section have come away from the ceiling, have slumped down into the earth a meter or two, uh, creating this kind of um, U-shaped arch. And perhaps even one or two of the the beams of wood or the stones that have are on the surface of this or on the ceiling of this uh, construct have fallen down and smashed. 
apart from that, there's no ornamentation here. There's probably on a pillar or two on either side, old iron um, holdings, sconces for torches. Um, there's no engravings here. There's no furniture here. Um, looking there are around, sconces, but there aren't torches. There are, there are kind of, yeah. Correct, they're empty. And okay. they'd be just for holding torches, supposed to lighting fires in. Um, looking around, you can see obvious signs of footprints in and out of the door you just closed, or that was closed for you. Um, very recent, there might be some okay. mud even. Um, the signs of the, the educational oh, excursion. Mm. Okay. Yes, you still can't see the far end of this thing. Okay. Should we cautiously stroll down? Yeah, um, I'll spacing. Check lads. I'll check for traps. <clears throat> well, which is it? You can either check for traps or you can walk space. Unless you're walking all behind Gex in one line. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. space line. Yeah. Single file, cautiously. I'll check the traps in front of us. Um, ten foot spacing between each of us. Well, I'll right. watch the rear. I'll see first. Uh, what is this? I'll go second. In oh, yeah. an investigation check for checking for traps, usually, okay. or perceptions. Gav's call. Cool. Depends what type of stuff you're looking for. Or I how like pressure plates and. Just, I'm just sort of watching the ground as I walk. In that forward. case, it's investigation and it's slower. Okay. I would imagine. But cool, you okay. go and you're you're kind of poking well, with like your 11. sword or stick, and it's slow going. You you notice the hole that I described that upturned flagstone to your right hand side. Mm. You're now fifty feet further into the into the hall, and you're getting to the section that's slumped down into the ground. Um, where, where the flagstone is is overturned, does it? How deep is that hole then? Is the hole deeper than the stone that's come out of it, so to speak? Yeah, it's hard to tell from the. It's thirty, forty feet out from this center line that you're walking down. But yes, you hold the. It just looks dark from here. Um, you look at the hole. Yeah, I, I'll yeah, bring. Yeah, I will. Now that you're at this angle to, to it, it. Think, yeah, yeah, there's earth has been upturned here and as you approach the hole holding or looking down your you've dark vision you I can do. see that something has indeed burrowed out the hole has collapsed on itself but it only collapses on itself maybe 10 feet down and whatever came out of here was probably the size of a person maybe a little bit bigger hmm. so the flag cells are quite um Quite sizable, probably 200 kilos, the weight of a two people. They're chunky. Yeah. Give us a perception check. For me? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Twelve? There's markings on the, well, it's the upside of the stone now, but it would have been the base. Um, looks like sword strikes or a pickaxe, maybe. Yeah, they're they're not pointed; they're more swipes, slashes. And there's also some sort of substance there. And are they um are they shiny like they're very fresh, or have they had a chance to oxidize? No, they've oxidized. These things are older, and the clay okay. that's been upturned from underneath it um, a mix of clay and gravel like building material opposed to natural is oh my, my pings just jumped to a thousand okay um, let me know if I drop out I'll restart my route yeah right. sure um, everything around here looks like it's happened a while ago okay a while ago being not in the same kind of not this week not, not, not a couple of weeks like the clay that's overturned with it is, is bone dry and yeah, the scratch marks have been oxidized. They're the same color nearly as the original stone. Most Whereas you... years, you're not entirely sure. 
you said whereas you said the footprints near the door felt very fresh those might be a week or less old they got to be our people there's no other footprints in here that you've seen yeah. apart from the ones that go to and from the door I will give the hand signal to Larry to continue. I'll continue. You push on, you can feel a slight dip in a dip in the, the center of the room as that collapse section on the right, you start to pass it. Um, sure your light now it? illuminates the far wall. Yes, you can. It looks pretty much just like I said. Something has obviously undermined the mm. foundations of this wall. And say the top two bricks, and when I say bricks, I mean like uh, they're slabs. They're pretty fucking chunky. I'd say the built the room itself is about forty feet high and then the arch begins and it's quite a huge dome. Mm. And probably four feet. So two bricks worth, two feet each, has just slumped into the ground. So there's a huge big kind of U shape in the in the brickwork. And then it's broken off the top of the ceiling and some of that has collapsed there. Looks like whatever came out that hole dug under here. Maybe. All right, carry on. Unless it's like I said, the, the, the back wall now comes into view. Um it's about a hundred or so feet past where you're standing now. You're about halfway into the room. Um, and as you approach 10 feet, 20 feet further there, you can see there's a huge archway. Um, and the archway, as you get closer and closer, you can see a slight trace of a huge metal portcullis. And there's two pedestals either side standing maybe 30 feet back from the portcullis and there seems to be some stonework on the ground ahead of you. Portcullis is closed. The portcullis is indeed closed. Okay. Mm. And as you get closer, you can see this portcullis. It's again, we've probably it's a it's a huge archway, approximately same kind of ratio as the dome above you. It's probably about 30 feet across, uh, probably about 20 feet at its height. And it's got this very, um, to your eyes, ineffectual portcullis, um, wide gaps between the bars. Hmm. Like most of you, possibly bar, Sigurd would be able to get themselves through this without armor. It's, you know, horizontal and verti or vertical slats, but again, yeah. they're just widely spaced. To, to stop something um, large. You do, however, recognize what looks to your trained eyes as a defensive emplacement on this side of it. There's large blocks, the sandstone-ish blocks of what was above, placed in a semicircle um, around the outside of this door and... There's also two rotted wooden, what looks like the base of, uh, what are they called, scorpions, or some large mounted crossbows, but have since rotted away. There's only the base of them there. There's a bit of metal in there that the uh, scorpion would be mounted on, and but the scorpions are not there. Looks like they really wanted to keep something on the other side of that door. Back in a sec, carry on. On this side of the door, there'll also be, I suppose it'll be over on one of the wall, the wall on the left, there'll be a big ship's wheel size, yeah. what's the word? Fucking wheel, I guess. Winch. Winch, yeah. Yeah. The mechanism done. seems to be hidden, but the wheel does have rope around it. And as you go closer, you can see there is indeed rope coming out um, around uh, an ancient greased kind of metal slider out of the wall. And the rope isn't perished. The rope is 
you wouldn't rely on it. The rope is ancient. The rope is ancient. Okay, sure. It is probably the width of your thigh. It's chunky. Um, and it's made of numerous strands woven together. But it is all but... Like... It's super frayed. It there there are like beetles living in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's rotted away. You know, you'd trust that if it was taking your weight, you wouldn't. You might not trust that if it was taking the, I don't know, two three tons of the portcullis. Sure. Well, well, that thing would make a hell of a noise anyway. What say we just uh, go through? Still, we should. Um, we ought to check what there is. If there's out. <laughs> Gives an investigation check for anyone looking around. Yeah, I um, I want to see if there's any markings in particular, um, you know, so deliberate room... markings, deliberate signage, or if there's a if there's nope. a room that we might have missed where, I don't know. Investigation check. I got one. I'll roll that bit better. Well, I got eighteen. A... Oh. Um. I got a three, but there's not one. 18, making an emphasis on trying to understand why this gate is like it is. It seems strange. Yeah. I mean, no. Sam can guess, but... Eight eight total. Um, I'm not learning too much. Yeah. Not, not 10 is going to cut it. Um, so, you go and take a look at the gate. That's your focus. Um. Mm. This gate has been slotted. Can you start from again and you cut out? Um, you can see the pick marks in the stone either side where the gate has been slotted. Okay. Um, the metal itself looks Back. looks very fine. It hasn't tarnished too badly. Um, you're not entirely sure what it is, but it looks to your eyes that possibly this this gate isn't original to this place. Do you have dark vision, Quintus? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay, so as you approach the portcullis, you can see on the far side that there is there's some of the slabs that would sorry, some of the bricks that would make up the wall in this chamber or on the far side mixed in with them are the colossal like three foot by three foot by eight foot blocks of the sandy or color stone from the surface and it goes off in a what looks like a cobbled stone on a slight gradient down off into darkness this room you can't see 60 feet or past 60 feet either side of the entrance to see what's on the other side. But it looks like there's possibly out of the distance of your vision, either side of this um, paving that goes down, that there might be some actually natural bedrock or natural stone. Hmm. I'll relay that. Okay. Assessment. Built, definitely built into the natural stone. Um, and they've oh, that, sorry, bought, I mean they've carved out of a cave. Yes, yeah, yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they've um, they've definitely bought stuff from the surface. But I think people have been here for a long time, a long time ago, maybe. Yeah. You should tread carefully. Is anyone proficient in history? Uh, yes. I am proficient in history. So anyone yes. who's proficient is can make this roll. Gives a history roll a disadvantage. Um, it... Go on. You can't again, but disadvantage. So Larry gets it at normal. You two get it at disadvantage. Okay, well, ignore my second Because role. of Larry's profession. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to give Gex a Bardic Inspiration as well, because I feel like 17. this is... Uh, I also got 17. 
think I'll I might not take that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No problem. All right. Unless you think I should increase it. <laughs> Let's try. Well, we've got two 17s. Yeah. Yeah. A disadvantage. 14, 16 for me as well. Yeah. Okay. So anyone over 15 succeeds. Okay. <laughs> Okay, sorry, right, yeah, fine. Yeah. Whether it be harken back to your um history professor or indeed Turson on his one of his ramblings on the long journeys you accompanied with Larry. He talked about buildings in phases and understanding archaeology in phases. And that a lot of the time you know, a good hill in a landscape will be occupied for hundreds of years by different tribes. And it seems to you that what's happened here is you have several different phases, as they would say. And different it eras. seems to be, yeah, it seems to be that the structures on the surface, irrelevant of what repair they are in now, might have come first. And the... The spiral staircase was part of a different era. Part of the same era as the large man-made chamber you just left. However, the cobblestones that you see on the other side of this um, portal are something different altogether. Something far older. I've seen places like this before. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Explain. Oh, reasonable, you know. Old and shit. So what we have here is um, a change in priorities, eh? What once was peace then became a blockade. Mm. Mm. Blockade, or perhaps they were trying to keep something out. Well, something and by that I mean the upstairs is perhaps the inside. To these people. This is the safety. Downstairs is the out great unknown. Perhaps something. Their idea was to hold it here away. Are you suggesting, Quintus, that there is some uh, hitherto unknown great civilization large enough to consider it the world of the surface alien? Well, oh. You put it like that, that's, that's fucking stupid. And who yet. knows? Mm. Could be a wild beast for all we know. Mm. Mm. We, we're not aware of much further east of here in terms of um, nation or civilization, huh? West of here. No, um, you're not. West of here, indeed, yes. No. And so... I suppose they're probably generally called the Wildlands. There's probably been talk of nomad tribes, barbarian tribes, and forests and plains. This mountain range that Verdant sits in continues hundreds of miles to the, to the west. Yeah. In which case... This might be old enough to consider the development of a tunnel network. Seems reasonable one might want to control a point of entrance and egress, um, death and taxes, and all that, lads. Oh, yeah. West Wall itself was considered, um, with your historical knowledge, it was probably considered... Um, the, the kingdoms, the empires uh, of the kingdoms boundaries at some point over the past couple of hundred years. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But it was failed to be kept in good condition by the by 
kings several oh. several many generations ago due to the fact that nothing ever came from the west there's nothing out there to defend against but this well this something different for sure yeah see what's down there I will um, first kind of feel the solidity of the portcullis, feel how um, sturdy it feels and, and anything, get my hands on it and then see how easily I can fit through the gaps. So the gaps are probably, I don't know, 18 inches square? Okay. So the slanderer amongst you will be able to do that without much... Well, you know, it's difficult. You won't exactly look graceful getting through. But it... I'll take me quiver off and slip through. It's not the lost dark him. iron no, no. you uh, expect from it. You cut out, yeah. We had uh, dark iron. For fuck's sake. I got bought it. The Jekko? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. No. Oh. You did, yeah. <laughs> Router, Great. restart. Yeah, okay. Cinnamon. Okay. Bye, uh, Felicia. I can find the router button. Help you, but. So go to the lobby. Uh, ding, 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 ding. BRB. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Let's do. What are we playing in case he doesn't come back? Um, solitaire. Don't know if I've got that anymore. I told you the thing game was good, didn't I, Jed? You did, yeah. Did you guys all have fun? Yes. It's that, yes. Oh, yeah, he's the thingy, isn't he? <laughs> I dropped my phone in the kitchen what? about two hours ago, and I just remembered to go pick it up. <laughs> Standard. Yeah. I dropped it, saw it on the floor, I was like, okay, I know that's there. And then I just like, huh, I don't know where that went. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> Ready to fight a mammoth again? Yeah, that'll be fun. What's he going to throw at us first? A bullet? I hope not. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, thousands of goblins. Thousands of. Yeah, that'll be all right. Oh god. Menu music. Yeah, same. Menu music's the worst.
Evening. Evening. Alright. Who this? Rando. Don't think it's still thinking about reconnecting. He is acting the bollocks. So sorry, yeah, where do we leave it? Um the steel isn't as dark as you would expect. It still holds a certain sheen. It still looks like worked steel. You you said that the the gate was newer than, for example, the walls and certainly than the cobblestones on the far side of it. No, the gate looks newer. Yes. Okay. It looks newer. There's something about the metal that's a bit off. Is it magic? We don't know. You tell me. I, I, don't know, I, don't know. I can't tell shit. <laughs> Looks a bit funny to me. <laughs> it's a bit iffy. That's for oh, sure. Oh, looks funny. Certainly okay. looks, looks newer to you. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, everything's a bit funny down here, to be honest with you, boys. All right, I'm going through. Through the gate. Right, table's back up. Cool. Okay, Larry, you... Aren't you, Larry? Oh. <sighs> So I, got your, I heard Larry you, my, and then nothing until aren't you, Larry? It's oh, yeah, joining. sorry, you're still loading in. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, wait for him to get on. I'm on the way. I'm in. Cool. Okay. So, Larry weasels his way through the gate, and uh, with light still cast on his short sword, he... It looks like... A natural stone cavern to your eyes. Doesn't look like it's any better, Gav. Uh, it's probably just because we started, but yeah, it, it said with the light cast on my sword, blank, natural cavern. I see a natural stone cavern. <laughs> looks like. I think you're a natural cavern. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a natural cavern, but there's been some sort of effort of a, a road using cobblestones has been made looks ancient looks disheveled hmm. and it leads off into the darkness the road is the same width as the doorway behind it and it seems to at a gentle slope down go off into darkness turning back you can see that indeed there's 
there's scratch marks there's there's um i wouldn't say they're silvery you know i wouldn't say they're steel but there is indeed scratch marks in this side of the portcullis uh looks like whatever the gate was here to stop may have got out of that hole back there I'm thinking. But I reckon this this ain't our um, academic party getting a little too <laughs> curious for their boots. I don't know. Are there footsteps here? Give us a mm, investigation check. Keep forgetting. What or you can is. take perception if you like. Uh, investigation's better for me. Eighteen. You can only get it if you're through this side of the gate. Yeah, I'm. I'm happy and keen to climb through. Well, cool. I'll okay. take perception because he's me a 12. Uh, eight, 18 for me on a, on, a, on an investigation roll. So Larry, you're looking around and can't see anything. Um, however, Captain doesn't spot footsteps, but he spots a trowel off to one side about 20 feet further down the slope. Hmm. Uh, can I fit through? Not with... What's your strength and con? And you have plate mail, don't you? Yes. yes um, and 10 no. and 10. No. 10 and... be very difficult with plate mail. Even as an elfy wealthy. It was in acrobatics? Athletics? It doesn't matter, the rules are. Ha! Guess who's got stuck One. in an 18 by 18 hole? He can wait while he takes his armor just mate. I guess. First thing we're doing when we get you back to Burden is we're taking you on a bloody athletics course. You've got to learn how to navigate stuff. What was the unit? Sorry, 18 by 18. What centimetres? Inches. Inches, Inches. right, sorry. Okay. And Sigurd, I believe, is just a unit, so... Yes, yeah, he is. Yeah. You he'd have a hard time getting through eighteen by thirty six, so the door. Modern, new, and definitely not part of ancient surroundings. Might even have fresh scrape marks on the, the metal tip. Not that they were digging here, more that it was dropped here. But no sign of footprints. The air down here is quite dry. And like I said, it's it's a semi-paved surface. So we won't be able to tell. Exactly. Any help? Yeah, um, working out no. what I can do. Uh, me. I yeah, will. Sigus, give us a fucking shove, will you? Pull you by your arms. Yeah, what? can I push? Can I push from the other side? To you try can and get, get Quintus yeah. through with a little bit of ignominy. Yeah. Yeah, give us a shove. Big one. I'll give him a little pull. I'll pull him off. Yeah, he, he's through. It's just noisy and a bit messy. You can Sigurd through on the other hand. Sigurd mm. just isn't getting I through this. I am going to spark up my torch and look to see if there's any uh, mechanism for lifting it. There is, off to the left hand side. Does it what, turn, turn yeah, you, you said that the rope was fucked. I said the rope looked fucked. Yeah, it's on its way. But yeah. I also said it was chunky. Uh, I'm going to try and give it a turn. 
Gives wait, us wait, wait a minute. Here. Wait a minute. Let me have a let me have a look here. Let's have a really good look at this rope. And I'll can I climb back through the through the gate? Yes. I'd like to have a really good look at the rope. Um, see if I can make a proper assessment of its condition. Even if I turn it and the rope breaks, <laughs> it makes no difference. Yeah. What would you like to use? What skill would you like to use to check the condition of the rope? So I think it's first of all, it's um, it's a, an investigation check. Fair. Off the bat, um, and then. I've got the spell mending. Now, if there are particular points of damage that are particularly weakened, uh, it says, so long as the tear or break is no larger than one foot in any dimension, I can mend it, leaving no foot trace of former damage. Um, it might be like a... You would you know, indeed be able yeah. to mend a section of it, but mm. the rope isn't damaged in any one place. Yeah. Age, just, has, note, yeah. age and insects have... Why, why don't camera. you just turn it and then see if he can get under? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. Let's check. I, I would like to um, assist Sigurd. I'm not going to spend a bike um, inspiration on it. While I was but... looking at okay. the thing, can I have took in some of my sword oil for keeping my sword nice clean and my armor and put it on the uh, the turny part? You know. Yeah, there's the turny part, and then there's a metal brace on. Yeah, just to give it a little on, bit of that, it. There's a metal brace that is kind of in the wall that is kind of, it's a tube, a ferrule, that's guiding the rope out so it doesn't wreck itself on the brick. Um, yeah, you can, you lube them up, give us a, um, an athletic <laughs> advantage. That's worthwhile, isn't it? <laughs> 18 uh, plus whatever, yes. 22. You you try and turn it and then realise, oh my God, I'm going to have to put my backpack down for this. Uh, you brace yourself, get down on the, your... You bend the knees and put your back into it. And with a huge feat of effort, you uh, you turn... The, it's an enormous wheel, like a, the wheel of a ship. And uh, you start to turn it around, and there must be some sort of uh, pulley system that you can't see because it's while it's a huge feat of effort, it's judging by the weight and the noise of the gate as it moves, you estimate it must weigh a few tons. So there must be some sort of mechanical device helping you. There's a huge crack and crunch as the gate lifts and starts to. God damn it. Fully lift up into the ceiling. <clears throat> now, can uh, with the way that it's moving, is there anything it'll, that I can do to, to brace it and lock it in place? It'll take a few move. minutes for him to get it into a position where... Well, it, it'll take him about two minutes to get it into a position where you could crawl, like, fucking facing the dirt under it. Or if you want to lift it higher, you can. On this wheel, there is a locking mechanism that will lock it in place once it's lifted to a certain. Once it's lifted, it doesn't have a auto latch where every time you turn it, it turns and clicks. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, that would make far more sense. You have, but, like, yeah, the locking mechanism is the, is the latch. Yeah, the L-shaped bit of metal. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. The so people that like, weren't turn stupid as Gav. Yeah. Okay, oh, uh, I think maybe best to go until we can get under under a crawl. Not necessarily wanting to put me face in the fucking mud. Okay, so it takes two or three minutes to get it to that height. It locks in place. There's the groan of the latch. And... and whatever framework is holding the latch in position, but it seems to be holding. While this is happening and the, the ratchets clanking and echoing in time down the corridor, Larry, Quintus, no, yeah, Larry and Quintus, can you guys give me perception checks? Oh boy. I'm 
<laughs> Not fucking much. Six. Uh, fuck all. all right. uh, nine. Echoes past you. Um, it's not a massive noise. Like I said, it was the initial clank of the uh, gate lifting from the surface that hasn't been done in a long time. That was the big noise. It's just that metal on metal as the wheel and the latch clank together. And a few moments later, when I crawl in the dirt, you're all standing on the, the downward side of the portcullis. Perhaps we should close that. Then we can't get back out. Mm, maybe best to well, I, keep I can it, fit through. it out effectively. That's right. I'll, I'll just stay in here then. No, I'll, I'll open it if we got to get through. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, sorry, old boy. That doesn't sound quite right. Okay. Touch narrow for sure. You fellas hear something? Yeah, nothing over your fucking noise. Yeah, all right, leave it out. Yes. Mm. Right. What are we making out on the far side, Gav? Is there anything more we can see now? Not really. With the light and, and your various racial traits, you know, you can see 60, maybe a bit more with the light, but not that much. It seems to be this procession, this road that leads gently, gently downwards. Natural cave, natural cavern, um, with this artificial ancient destroyed flagstones or cobblestones um, archway about 30 or not archway, roadway about 30 feet wide in the center probably 30, 40 feet either side of it of the natural stonework leading down Right. Um, the only things that you can hear is the, the flurry of the bats that you kind of kicked up a few minutes ago behind you but there's also bats and rats and other squeaky and flying buzzy things down here yeah. small tiny there's the sense of the wind as well there's definitely is air coming from down below damp maybe definitely cold much colder than on the surface Okay. Again, lads, quiet at least. Keep the light up. Larry, I want you up at the front then if you're happy to. I don't see so good, but I got this light, so sure. Sure, well, we'll just pray whatever we come up against knows, you know. Knows what? <laughs> Knows how to say hello before swinging a sword at us. All right. Let's Quintus go. Sigurd, give us stealth checks, please. Stealth check for everybody? No, just those in heavy armor. I am not attempting stealth. Yeah, armor. likewise. You're not arsed with stealth, even though Captain said, let's be quiet. Fair enough. Well. Yeah, I'm not purposely <laughs> making more noise, but yeah, well, I know you're not. I'm not asking for a loudness yeah. check. <laughs> yeah. Twelve. So. Well, cool. Okay. Plus one. So, so you, uh, cool. So you, uh, you plod your way down, following the sh faint outline of Larry, who's just tens of feet ahead of you. Larry, give us a perception check. Oh, let's do better this time. Well, uh, no, don't bother. You're going to walk up that way anyway. All right. And it's not threatening. 
<laughs> so, I, think I have a torch in hand as well, so... Yeah, I know, but D&D &D rules, even though a torch would light most of this cavern, a torch will only let you see 40 feet. Yeah, but... Which is stupid, because that's not, not how that physics I and light will. works. No, yeah. You know I mean? He is visible. So I can't be stealthy fucking torch. No, you Dark. can, if somebody's listening. As in, it's a sound stealth check. Yeah. Opposed to a... I'm not expecting us to be invisible, check. but... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Vargo. So, Larry, out ahead of you, as you were... You're, you're plodding through, walking down. It's still... You're a few minutes on the go. Nothing out of the ordinary has happened. You're kind of acutely aware, even though you're used to it, of being in this dark... Even as big as it is, claustrophobic place, you're just acutely aware of being so far underground, further than you've probably been in your entire life. Mm. Um, and, and you know, all these numbers are going through your head, like, Jesus, am I down, but are we deeper than my house? Are we deeper than ten houses? It's like, and, and you're just, and just out of the grayness that's in front of you, um, oh, another kind of this cavern seems to come to a halt but in the grayness of this uh, blank wall is this huge black circular disc hmm uh, sorry not disc uh, torus you know what I mean like donut yeah okay yeah. yeah yeah the center of it hollow the center of it continuing down the the base of this torus buried in the stone of the ground this path continues through it the lower quarter of it and seems to go on as you approach and you can the light from your torch catches on this dark stone you can see that there's engravings on it the uh, your light catches on the in, in embossed runes and pictograms that are there and there's some strange language engraved on it. Seems mm. to be right the way around in these dots and dashes and circles and slashes. Not something you've seen before. Okay. Well, this looks a mite queer. Certainly a portal or a gateway. Mm point of entrance or exit a warden definitely. it's definitely writing I'm confident of that yeah wait you said let me have a look uh arcana is it to investigate what I'm looking at no as in give us a no kind of role yeah that's well, that's what I asked to do it yeah Sorry, I was away with the fairies there for a minute. What were you looking 22. at? 22. You're pretty sure it's not any of the magics you've ever read about? This big ring that's got fact, writing on it. You're not, it's like a stargate with a road going through the I bottom. I do third. have detect magic. So oh, um, you're, you like you so, don't yes. think it's... Drop. I think it's... We don't think it's blank. Am I cutting out? No. No, no, you're not. Okay. He's still gone. So yeah, yeah I was away properly with the fairies for a second there. Uh, it's a stargate. We found a stargate, so you don't need to detect magic because it's clearly magic. Well, we found <laughs> some kind of gateway. It's a ring of black stone that goes down. Um, so I was going to suggest casting light on a stone and dropping it down there to see how deep it goes. Probably not down. As in, no? the road goes down ah. through it. They're ah, still at yeah. the same, like, five degree angle going down into the earth. It's just a gentle descent rather than a, like, yeah, a well. Yeah, and okay. this, is, this is just a... a per, being per, perpendicular to the doorway. Yeah, To okay. the slope, slope of the earth. So it's it's been buried and it's sticking out surrounding the road it serves the same purpose you would imagine as one of those japanese torals tories the red gates okay it's to delineate us from them 
and it's got strange, like I said, dots right. and dashes, slashes and circles. It is, it is a made, boundary that is made to be passed through. Depends what the writing says. Yeah. Um, give us 10 minutes, lads. Um, and I will sit and ritually cast Comprehend Languages. Oh. Cool. That'll take me 10 minutes to, to put together. What are the other three of you doing while Captain sits and keep, keep watch. starts mumbling? Point me bow down the hole. Or through the hole. Uh, with my free hand, I'm going to reach into my little pouch, grab a little bit of tat, eat that while I'm looking around. Looking around the uh, edge of the platform, I guess, or wherever. Yeah, right. uh, just keep in mind. All right, everyone, the three of you give us perception checks. You can have advantage if it's on hearing. Right, what? How, what? How do we get advantage, advantage of this? if you have some sort of hearing bonus. Oh, no. right. Keen eared, yeah. whatever. 16. Yeah, so all I had was advantage on hearing. <laughs> That's what I said. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ten. No, none of us are dogs, and therefore. Yes. Yeah. That's a bit confused. <laughs> I got sixteen. Sigurd, what you get? Twenty-three. Yeah, boy. That's what we're talking about. Sigurd, about five minutes into the captain's chanting, you can hear this clack. Deeper and coming from down below, coming from further down the corridor, this uh, tunnel down into the abyss. It's like this, and then a skittery sound. Not like a, not like a large insect on wood. This is something bigger. I, uh, we have a torch between us. Yeah, so what? Someone has a light. Larry's on point, facing down the tunnel he's got his i think he said he was putting his bow down there and his short sword will probably be on the ground beside him and it's currently yeah. lit right so i'm gonna come over and i'm gonna throw my torch towards what i hear in that direct you know i'm gonna throw the torch in the direction of what i'm hearing the lit torch not larry's short sword thank you <laughs> Road. Oh my god. This is the shit other side. So that's the cobble. Start road. again. Start again. From Larry throwing torch, uh, from Vic throwing torch, please. That's we lost the, you completely. That's the whatchamacallit. I didn't. Okay. And the road, and the shit outside the road, and. Okay. Gex, if you want to place... Sorry, you guys are here. Captain Tommel is casting his magic on the X. Uh, what I am I doing is I'm, the hole. I'm, I'm sat kind of on my ass with my loot in my lap, gently tuning it effectively and listening to the vibrations of the strings as I'm tuning it. Hearing the vibrations and echoes back from... Which direction Rancher. was the exactly. ship coming from? Okay. That is down. <laughs> I'll get you back in a second. Yeah, I'm watching. Sit back. So, yeah, so from. I'll walk over here and I'll throw the torch down that way towards. And then I'll. Uh... Did we catch what it sounded like? Too, the only uh... bit I got from what it sounded like was shuffling that didn't sound like an insect, something bigger. Yeah. That's, that, yeah, that was the description. That was it. Yeah, okay. Didn't like, sound like, like a small sk creature. Skittering, not like a large insect on wood, but bigger. Yeah, right, cool. Um, I, don't I, know probably, I think my brain is missing Gav's voice sometime, as well as Gav's voice cutting out. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm skipping beats. Yeah. Could be a Bahir. And then I will shout to Quintus as well, because I know that you've got dark vision. So <laughs> I okay. know that you can see further than I can. 
actually think. Actually, that's not even that far. Though. Was it sixty? The that's as far as I can see. It's about here, as you yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. If you're like, watch- I've been watching the back. I haven't heard this, so you, yeah, for all I know, you've just turned around and thrown a lit torch down somewhere, and I don't know why. Which, which is yeah. which is reasonable, to be honest. If we're yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right. So. <laughs> Fucking insane. <laughs> Let me get that out. So the lit torch lands about there. And it illuminates for I'd say where it's on the ground, I'm gonna say ten f- I suppose it's the same, isn't it? It illuminates out to the either side of the road and down to a down to about here. A moment or two pass, and there's definitely something coming. Who cast the light spell? Me. How long does a light spell last? Is it an hour? I am. Might be eight hours. One hour. One hour. Cool. It's still active. And will be for a while. Probably yes, a but I hour. cast it at, at three. So. I'll, I'll leave my sword like on the ground where I am here. Get my bow yeah. out. So I can see if I'm quiet back to... here, boys. So, something skittering. Coming. And you see this spindly leg. Yeah, but I haven't been told that... or passed the perception test. That was my... Uh... Yeah, something's just, coming. Vic just said something's coming. Oh, right, Roger. Let's hear it. A, a spindly, pale, yellow leg of a creature that must be six foot the shoulder a spidery leg just pierces through the darkness and out into the light followed by a second followed by a third and fourth and finally its head these giant mandibles standing at about seven feet tall pierce their way out of the darkness these wide jagged mandibles this green ooze dripping from them followed by an insectoid head with these um, six or seven eyes either side of its chitinous skull big antenna sticking out the top step out of the darkness the whole thing comes into the light it doesn't seem to notice the light nor you Twitches looks around left and right its whole body comes out this long multi-segmented body six legs and the giant mandibles look around Twitches it seems to stop and it's standing over the torch and as its head moves down and its antennae get closer to the heat it jumps and skitters and makes this uh, screeching sound as it jumps a little bit back and off to the left away from the heat yeah. the whole thing is like an off albino and then up along one side of the path the left as far as you're concerned up here it starts to skitter up towards the dark stone portal and let's roll initiative okay okay oh boy i have a lot yeah you do bonus to initiative uh 12 16 12. Uh, 26 i roll again because uh somebody's dice has just collided behind Oh, where's Larry? Well, I rolled it there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might need a bigger table. How tall was the ceiling, Gav? Was the Gavin we in? <clears throat> Are we in like a claustrophobic the walls, corridor? The walls were about 40 feet, and it, was, it arched up from there. Oh. Is this thing... Is probably thing, about 70 feet. Is this thing on the wall, then? No, that's not wall. That's at the edge of the paved pathway. Oh, okay, and so there's open space there. There's open space to the about 20, 30 feet out to the wall on the left. I actually made a proper balls when I drew that line because I drew it too near. It should be about the same distance as the other line, which is about the 30 feet mark. But if something needs to... 
But so it's probably if something needs, if there. something wants to get through, it's got to come through the ring because the, the donut is blocking the path either side of the the path, so to speak. No, the ring is the width of the entire chamber. Okay. No, stop attacking the hands. Who's up first? Well, it's me. <laughs> uh, I'd like to... I don't know. Can I get in cover? Like, I want to hide, basically, uh, at the edge of the portal. And then shoot. There is no cover. Okay. Can I just hide? So I, I haven't <laughs> described it properly, obviously. Cause you From the sounds me. of it, this thing's blind. So if you look... Yeah. So this is the rough shape of the archway as you're looking at it, right? Yeah, yeah, and it goes the whole whole width of the chamber. The walls are there. Actually. And yeah, yeah. the ring is like that. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get a sneak attack on it, <laughs> basically. <laughs> is it aware of me? Wait, wait until someone's in combat with it. You'll get one. What are you doing? I'm going to shoot the fucker. Okay. Whatever sure. it is. Uh, Giant big albino seven, insect. Wood. Fifteen. A fifteen. The arrow clatters off its face, ducks down, and pierces it between one of its um, segments. Oh. Roll damage. Beautiful. Uh, well, it's D4. Uh, five. Okay, do you have a second attack? No. I will okay, who's retreat next? back behind the beefcake, though. Well, one of the beefcakes. Who next? You, you're a human, guess. Yes. Should have rolled Hit I behind one of us. Think yeah, I'm next. Um, I don't have... I haven't finished my... No, your spell is about four minutes out from being finished. Yeah, fine. I'm going to break the ritual then. Um, and... Give me a second. I'm reminding myself what I can actually cast. What I can do. I am going to. Hmm. I don't have a bow myself. What I'm going to do is. Assume that this thing has an intelligence low enough. Now, this thing. Can I get some kind of assessment? Now, it's reacted with its antennae towards the, the flame, towards the heat. Um, Did you say that it does have eyes or not? It does have. It has compound eyes either side of its it wide okay. skull. And has it issued any kind of sound? Does it appear to be it able to hear It has made a skittering well? kind of screechy sound when its head approaches the flame. Yeah, okay, so it might also be able to make sound as well. Um, here's what I will do, is I will, with while sat, with my loot in my hand, I've been gently kind of twisting and, and, and uh, tuning and listening to the strings, and it will instead twang them quite loudly, making... Not a nice noise. Can I ask this spider creature to make a wisdom save? I'm casting dissonant whispers. It's a nine. It's a nine, it, so it fails. So it will What's take... Dissonant whispers do? Dissonant whispers. The creature will take... It'll take some psychic damage. So I'm going to roll 3d6. Um... So that'll be 14 points of psychic damage. And then the creature must immediately use its reaction to move 
if, as far as its speed allows away from me. It won't move into obvious danger like fire or a pit, uh, but it needs to um, run away immediately. Okay, who's next? What are you doing nothing else? That'll be that'll be my turn. I will stay sat where I am. Um, so that's that's not on its turn. That's as a reaction it moves. Oh, okay. It is going to upend itself, turn back into the darkness. 10, 15, 20. And it's going to jump back. And you will just see it as it edges it, it the edge, or it hits the edge of the darkness. It's going to dive into the ground. There'll be a splash. You'll hear a liquidy sound. Maybe a sound of, like, you could only describe as some of the scum of Redania puking in the streets of the night. And then it's just going to disappear. Okay. Hmm. That doesn't give me much options. <laughs> no, I know, but I've driven it off for the minute. Um, oh. I'm going to cast Bless. Actually, no, I'm not, because it only lasts a minute. Stand by, hold your, hold your ground. Ten turns. Are we still in initiative here? Yes, the yep. first. Yeah. Yeah. Bless. Uh, uh, needs it, though. I'm going to cast mm. on me. Uh, yeah. Who else could do with an extra D4? You want three people in it. Yeah. Oh, you choose, just to, who cares? Uh, Gex and Sam, I guess. Okay. Cool. <sighs> and what, what is it on Bless? Bless, it's uh, saving throws and attack rows. Get an extra d4. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. For future ref, uh, I will never be using attack rows. Maybe spell attacks. Does it count for that? I think it does, does it? If you're making an attack roll, so Guiding Bolt, for example, does. Mm. Oh, okay. Right, is that all you're doing, Sig? And I might move forward a bit. That's um, a bonus action for Bless, or does it take your action? Action. I think it's action. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. Right, after six Mm-hmm. Walk to the front of the group. Uh, already got that up. Can't see the fucker. Um, I will ready an action to cast a spell on the thing if it comes out. Okay. In fact, a cantrip. I will I'll be very specific. Cantrip. That's it. Okay, I think it's its go. Um, does it have a saving throw, Jed, or is it? No, so it's that's just its turn. It's just a level one spell. So um, on the thing's turn, it can move. It can start to move back. But um, yeah, it has has to have done. You know, moved its full reaction, full movement away from me, and that's used its reaction for the round, so it won't get an attack of opportunity, for example. Get you. Okay. Okay. So. Um. Actually, actually, quite good. And does it get its full movement, or does it get the movement it had left? It so mo- say it, it was in between its rounds. Um, so oh, it's it like a dash uses, action. It uses its reaction, reaction to move mm. as far as its speed allows. Okay, got it. Um, so it moves its speed as a, as a yep. reaction. Okay, uh, top of the round. Uh, can I see it? No. Shit. That's ready lovely. action, lads. You can, you can, you can ready stuff. Yeah, I realise I could have steady aimed. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my ready action will be to steady aim and shoot it. If I can do that, a bonus action. Uh, an action. I think you need to be able to see your target to steady aim. Yeah, if it pops up. 
So, it, well, how about this? As a bonus action, I can give myself advantage on my next attack roll. Can I ready the attack roll if I see it? Oh, I also need to not move. Yeah, I think that's yeah, steady aim. Yeah, I think you can. So, okay, yeah, so I'm crouched, steadying my aim, and if, if I see it, I will shoot it. Yeah, okay. For tonight, yeah. I might have to look up the rules. Well, I, yeah, I forgot okay. to yeah. I forgot to do it on my yeah. first turn. <laughs> so. as, as a bonus action. Yeah, but it's you... now out of view. Yeah. So I would yeah. I would assume it's like an assassin thing and you can but it says your, as a bonus action, ability. I can give myself advantage on my next attack roll on the current turn. So if if right, so if we were gonna be pricks, we might say a ready action doesn't take doesn't occur on your turn. Okay. But that's up. That's the no, thing that's I fine. would let Gav decide on. No, that's fine. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, it depends. On, I will on, on a reader. But I yes. will. Okay. Just shoot it. You you drop to a knee. Well, you can't see it because it's if it burrowed pops up. That's I'm ready yeah. the action to shoot. So it. you're ready in the action to shoot it. That's yes. cool. You can, and you do. And then it's but... back to uh, Liam. Um, I will stand now. How far can I move? Can I move far enough to get to this? I can't move far enough to get to this torch, can I? Close, but maybe not all the way. Yeah. You, you can do, what, 12? In a sprint? Well, yeah, no, but I, I couldn't then throw the torch uh, if I could get to it, so... Here's what I'm going to do, is... I'm going to move 30 feet. All right. And then... That is... To there, that's 30 feet. That is kind of the torchlight. So I think what I can <clears throat> do is I can cast a minor illusion image of now this thing i will assume do you know what i'm going to do is i think minor illusion just says a sensory effect i'm going to put my own kind of smell here <laughs> and trigger um yeah sound or image of an object so it doesn't say a sensory effect um sound yeah, I'm going to make the sound there where I've dropped the thing of um, a person and a person kind of gasping as though they are wounded. Here, drop that as a sound marker. Yeah. Okay. Who's after Liam? Uh, be me, I think. Is it visible again now? No. Nope. Not visible. Okay, uh, I'm going to move a little bit further forward in ready action, I guess, then. Okay. What is this yellow it? circle? Sorry. The light. Okay. The light, the torch. Yeah, so, 10 foot from the yellow um, marker is bright light. The next 10 feet is dim light. Okay, so... And Brilliant. you're currently in darkness. But I can see into that light. Yeah. So I can see what's in here. I just can't yes. see what's right. That's fine. Moving. I take it that was next time. Oh, I got. Moving up, ready action to cast spell. Same again. Okay. My turn. On to its go. It bursts out of the ground in front, well, actually between um, the, the gasping sound and um, Sigismund. And it um, attacks Sigismund. Dex save, Gav? For what? The Sacred flame. Well, you should have said that first. Oh, yeah, I literally my... just said it, and then you said it turned up. Oh, can I see it from way over here? Because 
Yeah. Next save, it's either eight or four if you pass. Fail. Oh, can I shoot past Jed? First. What? As in, who read the action first? Uh, oh, Gex. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Gex had, had the turn at the top of the round, definitely. Can I shoot past Jed and hit it? You can. I'm going to give you, unless you have any feats to counteract it, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give it a plus five on um, AC. Okay, I rolled 25. It's in half cover. <laughs> you hit it. Okay. Uh... And that should get sneak attack because it's next to Sigmund. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. So, uh, five, Roger, 46? Three. Three. Five plus. Many. Uh, 12, 17. Nice. Thunk. You're using a short bow? Long bow? Short bow, bow, yes. Oh, shit. Short That's, bow. Oh, wait. 10, 20. Wait. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Wait, is it here? It's no, right it's it's there. Okay, yeah. It's, it's within regular range. So, yeah. Short bow. Yeah, arrow slings through, cracks through its chitin, and uh, jabs into it in its lower neck. Beautiful. Um, this fucking grey green, fucking yellowy ooze blobs out of it in massive chunks. It howls. Who's up next on the Sam fucking hold? Uh, yeah, but it was, it was it was eight damage, Gav. If you did not. Know. Well, hang on. Who's is? Does Liam have a reaction? I didn't have a ready action. I spent my action casting minor illusion. So oh, uh, then it's Sigurd. Uh, okay. Quintus is, is it yeah. visible? Yes. Was it the pink dot there? Is it? It's no. between you and the pink dot. Okay, so it was. Right. Yes. Yeah, just need to. Literally, okay. Literally next to you. Yeah. Okay, so if I wanted to move into the light, it wouldn't get a reaction because I'm still. Like next to it. Yes, yeah? that's true. Uh, you don't have that option. It's ah. you're, you. You don't have an action. You can only do what you specified in your hold action, and your hold action was to attack it. Oh yeah. Um, I turn this over. <laughs> F. F. Middle middle mouse, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Okay. Is it yeah. Just so roll the dice. I Stop playing with the numbers. Figure. But then that's all you get. As well. N no. All you get is your hold action. You had your turn to move. This is on the creature's turn. This is ah. triggering your reaction. Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, do, do I... So I won't be able to cast... Um, nope. Okay. Literally what, you, what, you, what said. you said. <laughs> you, you, you said, if I see it, I will attack it. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. My sword... Uh, plus seven, so it's just one D fucking. Yes. Is he dead? Roll it. <laughs> it just froze perfectly. Yeah, roll it again. It's off the table. That'll hit. 21. 21. That'll hit. And then da, 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 2d6 plus 4. 8. <laughs> eight. You, did have the, you did have the eight. blessed e4 as well, but... Oh! Yeah, we already have damage, is it? it oh. Yeah, we already know we've hit, so... Yeah. So that is it. It was on 36. You just did... Eight. Uh, that's up to 44. You cut through some of its head, its mandible drops to the ground, the thing slashes backwards, throwing out this fucking greeny uh, yellow ooze, splashes you. Give us a constitution save. And you've got a, D, a d4 to add to it. Yeah, he does. Eleven plus three, so fourteen. Succeeds. 
there's a splash across the tabard you wear and some of the metal encasing your body and there's a hiss and a smell and stink coming off it seems to be eating slowly into the, your clothing um, however looking around and wiping the slime from your armor you can see that this thing has been cleaved its its skull its its headpiece has been cut in two and it is slumped dead on the ground in front of you nice nice okay. mighty strike well I am going to promptly clean my blade with any rags I have and my armor. That's because. <laughs> Alright. I'm not going to drop my concentration on fucking Bless then as well. <laughs> Take off this silly hat. Right. Okay, those of you that are on the far side of the portal, can I get um, perception checks? Anyone with dark vision can give me a. Sorry, uh, that is that to a certain advantage. The further side or the former side? Far further side. side. Yeah. That's you, uh, Vic. Okay. Well. Wow. Fourteen. Yeah, Sigurd. What languages do you speak? Uh, common, Dwarvish, Elvish, and Gnomish. So you notice you're you reach into you know a belt pouch and your for your oil and your rag and your fucking you tear off the bit of your tabard that's sizzling. And while doing this, your eyes catch um, the glimmer of the runes on this side of the portal. And they seem to your eye, although you're not too well educated in the subject, to be some form of elvish? Although you can't quite read them. Okay. Uh, I'm going to shout over to the two pointy ass. Hey, uh, you might be able to read this side. The, uh, this is more legible. I'm going to try the German again, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, what's it say? Look at what he's putting on. So, you turn and look up at the arch. And it seems like there is, is indeed... It looks elvish, but it's kind of gibberish. It's Maybe it's ancient or old or something. You're not quite familiar with it. I'll give us a base intelligence check. Um, for anyone who speaks Elvish, if That's anyone has, yes. in fact, I don't know if there's a way to do any better than this. I would say if anyone has the background of anything educational, I will give you advantage. Okay, I'm I'm just going to cast comprehend languages, Gav. I uh, I won't do the ritual. I'll just. The tune that I had been been slowly playing out, I will I will play at normal speed to myself. Failed. Wait, is this my roll? Oh shit! Uh, I thought it was an eight. I looked away for a second. Uh, I guess I got not twenty. <laughs> you speak Elvish? Yes. Yeah. I've got Sage, Gav. Does that count? Yeah, but you're older one, so no. <laughs> I mean, um, I've rolled a one on one dice. That you would do. Uh, that's true. Roll the other dice then. But, oh, that doesn't really matter. You have figured it out between you. Well. So yes, you can see indeed that this is essentially a litany of sin for those who cross this threshold. It is a beware all those who enter here. Written on the inside. Pointing. Pointing down into okay. the darkness. Okay. I haven't gone through yet. So <laughs> it is an ancient elvish warning, older than the peoples, even the elf folk of Verdania. And it is talking about the perils that will belie those that cross this threshold. So on, on the uphill side, that's what it says. Yes. And on the downhill side? Uh, I meant on the downhill side, I think. Okay. 
As in, this side is the elvish shit that yep. says, get fucked. And on this side is the dots and bleeps and bloops and blushes. Yeah. So I'm I'm casting comprehend languages properly. Yes, and that's what you're getting. I, it's okay. So on the uphill yeah. side, it says, you know, um, anyone who goes through here, you know, abandon. Oh, all sorry. Hope. So you go read the purple side. I will. I would like to read both sides, please. So the yellow side, you get what you get. It's that. Yeah. Beware all. Yeah. Abandon hope all ye who enter here. Yeah. And on the purple side is. Is fucking insults and screams and shouts. There's certain what you can only think are tribal names or family names being specifically called out, but these don't make sense to you. The uh, the names don't. Exiles, do maybe. You think, yeah. You think in you, they could possibly be elven tribes or elven family names, but if they are, they are ancient and in a tongue or in a thing so far so far back that barely makes sense it's just that like some of these letters belong to each other yeah the same way when you you can tell dutch is dutch or finnish is finnish because they have some strange you know that have yeah. aa beside each other and you don't get that in english or what, what we call whatever. morphemes in, in yeah exactly yeah. so it's morphemes like and phonemes yeah so some of these things are just weird and alien to you but the, the purple language is what i'm going to call the stuff that's yeah. printed on the uphill side is in your mind not your educated mind more your intuitive mind because of your arcana or your yeah. god's blessing is um oh sorry no your bardic knowledge yeah is a fucking ancient the yellow stuff that's ancient elven history like beyond the 500 years that elves have settled in this land but the purple stuff is eons past hmm yeah the old 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 songs echoing out of the rocks uh, the, the, the twang of the string of my lute vibrates within the stones and the meanings come back yeah. to me dark murmurs from the earth nothing more Barely intelligible. Yeah. Rets and insults, lads. And I'll translate it as best I can. It seems like whoever lived downhill didn't like whoever was above it. And I guess right, so, is this we saying, include us. So is this saying that if you go up yeah, to, 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 clar to clarify, abandon hope, all you who enter here is pointing at the surface. All the, the ancient insults and shit is pointing at the hole in the ground. Mm. So I will assume it's whoever is coming from the uphill side will see this barrier of insults and be told to turn back. Because you're not fucking welcome here, you old cunts. Exactly. And those that are coming from below are being insulted in ancient Elvish or very old Elvish yeah. to, you know, abandon all hope. But what's anything, on the, other, anything on the other side, side of this side yeah. is like in some weird alien tongue is come down here and we'll eat your balls or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> you can't really tell. But I guess this it, includes us. What are we doing then? We're going in? Well, lads, uh, I'm willing to bet that I know anything about academics and our man Larry will tell us otherwise if I'm wrong. But there are not ones to heed an ancient warning so much as to let the curiosity tickle at their nostrils. Mm. And they end up following their noses. Yeah. That's like a dog whistle to an archaeologist. <laughs> Well, this is definitely more exciting than pushing fucking papers through the office. Yeah. Now, what we have here, lads, is a threat. And we're not enlisted anymore, we're not at war, in which case, as before, I cannot force any of you to go forwards. 
but I think I'll be going onwards because personally, I like to see what's there. Absolutely. I'll take point. Nothing else. This is a story that's going to shake up a few things. I'll uh, sheath my sword. Keep my bow out. And I will recast light on something that you are carrying. That isn't in a container that's not light for it. Like my hat. Very good. There's no light coming from the mm. so. <laughs> Cool. I'm going to go and re-pick up the torch I threw. All right. So you make your way further down. Cool. Sounds good. Quiet. Quiet for the next while. The wind is still there. A dry air coming up from below. And uh, you pass out of sight of the portal behind. You're down about another five minutes when you start to hear the chittering of smaller things. There's no squeak of rats, no bats, nothing like that. Down here, the light is never penetrated. Any little insects you see are pale white with speckles of color on them. But it's the chittering sound to your ears seems to be something from something a little bigger than those little insects. Maybe the size of cats, dogs, little things like that. And it's after another moment or two further that the light starts to uh, reflect off these little small surfaces scattered along the cave to either side of the main path floor. What comes into sight is these... At first, dozen or so little albino creatures. Nymphs of what came before. Little insect replicas of what you've seen. Hmm? But are... That's this guy. Maybe a foot long. foot and a half. And at first, it's a half dozen, then a dozen. And then you realize the noise is picking up. And it's still this the higher frequency or the higher um, tone of these smaller creatures clacking their little mandibles together. But there's lots of them. And you can see either side in the, the old carved out stone tunnel that there's mounds either side. They are skittering over the mounds and fighting over to get on top. And you're wondering if this is some sort of um, behavior that these insects go through until you see what is clearly a walking stick poking out of the top. And at some point, a few that made it to the top fall on their back and fall away with their six little legs in the air. And you can see the gnawed away arm, bone poking through the fleshless fingers pointing to the sky and it seems that there's a clump of bodies that have been distributed either side to the young of this large creature that you slew oh boy and there must be 40 or 50 of them within sight now oh. they're only tiny but there's a lot of them oh the little bugs right here yeah. mm. that's exciting that's exciting okay your man walk with a limp. Larry? What? Your man walk with a limp. Why? The walking stick. Oh. Yeah. Shit. As you stand motionless here, they don't seem to hear you. <laughs> As these few words have been thrown between you. Uh, they're all stood together in a pile, right? That's what you're saying. All like, on the like, fucking, all, there's two piles. Around, the, around the, the corpses. There's two piles either side of the road. So assume this double line represents a five minute walk. They're essentially there and there. And in the center of these two piles is the high point 
the high point being a mound of bodies. And they are fighting to get on top of each other to get into the mound of bodies. On the right hand side, there is a, what should we call it, a um, little splodge of yellow, is essentially a hand holding up a walking stick. Right. Uh, utterly dead. Like it, it's a, it's a, um, it's a bone hand. Oh. You can tell it's a modern walking stick and the hand still has fresh meat on it. Ah. Uh, could be mystery salt. It looks to your eyes like it is. Well. Oh, well, let's go back and give them the bad news. <laughs> We need to yeah, recover something. Yeah, hang on, I'm just trying to work out what I'm trying to do. How large the insects? Are they hand sized? Are they forearm sized? They're about the size of a cat. About the size of a cat. Okay, so if we're having to fight all of them, that's going to be tough. Yeah. I got a couple of dozen of them now. I would like to cast Shatter on the <laughs> biggest group. And as it move forward and catch up. Yeah. Well, the groups are about even size either either side. Um, the walking stick, like I said, is on the right hand side, but there's definitely bodies on the left hand side as well. Do you have any preference? Uh, I don't want to destroy the old man's body with the shatter. So I guess but the preference all, is the all other. All the young students, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, I'll desecrate all the children. <laughs> the old man's probably got something we need, right? Yeah. The indie logic. <laughs> so there you're you focusing it on which side? The, the side without the walking stick. Yeah, the left of the walking sticks on the right. Okay. Um, it's got a range of 60 feet, so... You move up, you... you um, Start to cast the spell. Cool. Ten foot radius. Uh, con fifteen save go. Okay, so you cast it. Just give him the one save. Yeah, thirteen damage. And it's a, very noisy. There's a massive crack. Thunder echoes through the tunnel. There's a um, splodge of fucking tens of these bodies just bursting, erupting in this pale yellowy green ooze. And whatever was in the mound is now covered in that ooze. And you can hear this. You can see, or well, maybe see? Yeah, see the small kind of sizzles and puffs of smoke erupting from maybe the clothing of the people trapped underneath. And they all, both sides of the corridor, scatter back downhill. The ones on the right-hand side reveal the body of, uh, well, a man in robes, or a, a skeleton in robes, eaten mostly to the bone. There's packs, there's trowels, there's shovels, there's backpacks that they seem to have left. Um, on the left-hand side, again, they've eaten most of the bodies. There's a couple of younger, smaller bodies there, but they're now all sizzling and melting and burning with this acid burning into them. The creatures flee down the corridor. The echo reverberates down. Well, you certainly you know how to attract attention. <laughs> Let's work quick then, lads. Mm. Sharpish, sharpish. Kill the bodies. Little, little, little. Yeah. Um, I will hold guard looking further down while they run. Uh, need the lights. Um, cool. I'll okay. Go, so I'll go to the opposite one. Whichever Larry goes to, I'll go to the other. Yeah. So, what are you looking to take back? Uh, I'm going to see if there's any of his, any of the Aldrich's possessions left. Like a bag or so anything. Moving over to the right hand side of the tunnel, you find <sighs> several. Uh, cre skeletons at this point, although they're fresh and their bodies are still being gnawed on. Most of them are missing faces. Mm. Um, there's a couple of backpacks there. Some of them you, you open up and, you know, tools, 
food, travel rations, things like that. Um, one of them seems to have scroll um, scroll cases, um, um, parchment, writing materials. To your eyes, it looks like you know the type of stuff the professor would bring. Mm. Um, and you grab that bag. Yeah, um, nothing on the brief... skeleton that like a ring or anything like that would be recognizable. Is it perception check? All right. Uh, 15. Just because you're looking for it, there isn't one. But not all of these skeletons have all their digits. Yeah. Um, but just because you're keeping an eye out for that shiny metal, as you want to do, um, you notice in a pile of dung nearby a gleam. Mm. And as you go over and take a look after picking up this pack, you pluck this thing out of the stinking mound of dung and it's it is a ring and in fact you recognize the ring it's a ring of the seat of the in university of of verdun uh, okay it's um a blue sapphire ring signifying knowledge encased in gold except not only has the gold melted around the ring the actual stone of the ring itself has melted around the gold on the other side Ugh. whatever this acid does and it, in fact even picking it up after a moment like a couple of seconds you feel you feel a bit of heat in your skin so you kind of you stick it in a bag or something or you throw it in the pouch yeah. or in your backpack and like you wipe off your hand yeah. well, you're fairly confident you've got what you need yeah that's at least that's proof that they they that it's them i guess Guys well, who went to the um, group on the left-hand side find a lot more of the younger bodies. That's right. Obviously, the four or six <laughs> students that came. Um, Probably hard, 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 to, hard to tell how many <laughs> now. Hello? Yes, hi. Give, give us a perception check. It's now quiet. The skittering has disappeared off down the tunnel. Perception check from everybody? Yeah. Uh, 15. Oh, just that, not just the guys on that side? <clears throat> yeah. No, everyone. Okay. Um, uh, oh, 22. Remind myself. 14. Uh, 12. Sigurd, on a mute. Hey, sorry, guys. Fairies. Uh, Drew's 16 perception test, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. 16. Oh, okay. No, you hear nothing except the, the fading echoes of the skittering. A moment or two later, there's the echo of that initial magic. Blasted from the Storm Lord that comes back up the corridor towards you. The echo of the Shatter Spell. Well, they certainly know we're here. Right, quick smart lads, grab what you can. Um, Gav, I think almost what we want to grab is skulls, if I can. Good idea. Skulls are doable. There's plenty of them. Very good idea. You grab what you can. Not all of them are here. And unless anyone's got like, I know you left a lot of your gear on the surface, and you're only down here an hour and a half or so. But I don't think you probably have the ability to carry all of the. Was it sixteen skulls? Um, there was a dozen at least. I can't quite remember it what was I said. It was, it was like the professor told students, students to mercy. Yes. 15. Yeah. 15. I will go over and lend my uh, strength. To, uh, no, it's yeah. not a question of strength. It's a question of capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Carrying, you know. Got a backpack. 
Yeah, but it's full of your food and your shit. Let's just run, just run a rope through all the eye holes. I'm sure it won't. That's weird. exactly well, right. Yeah, okay, going okay, back okay, through cool, civilized so, town. Cool, I was joking. Okay, so I was joking. You, <laughs> you, yeah, well, that's what they've gone with. Um, yeah. so, so between you, you carry the the, the twelve. I'm going to say skulls out of here. Cool. Okay. As in, you couldn't, or they were broken, or whatever. Yeah. Um, Reseal the portcullis. And you head back up. Um. You make your way back up a fairly good clip um, and you make your way back up and thankfully as you pass under the, the black stone of the portal, you feel a bit of relief, but not as much relief as you feel when you see the shine of the por- scrapes and the portcullis. Um, making your way back up into the grey stone of the underground antechamber to this downward highway. Um, you take a breath, you look around, looking at each other, deciding what to do next. Poor Kulish right. remains taut on the rope. Is so, there so a, any the quick releases for the... Um, yeah. We knock out quick release then, like where it knocks the latch out of place. Yeah, you can. The quick release drops, the wheel spins violently. Um, and the portcullis comes down with an almighty wallop that echoes both sides. Okay, this is going to be fun when we come back. <laughs> uh, what about that hole in the ground? Can we seal that up in some way? Or Oh, mate, I'm not druid this. <laughs> I'm All not right. druid because it's shaped terror. Mother. Yeah. Nobody has that then. Eh, fuck it, we'll leave it. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Yeah, I got nothing. No, but that'll be right. I don't have kegs of gunpowder this time. (laughs) Well, that was unfortunate for them, I guess. Yeah. Such a curiosity, not enough caution. Mm. Bill. Folks give their lives in pursuit of knowledge. I suppose we can respect that, eh? I'll uh, tap Larry on the shoulder and say, sorry if you lost my friend. Yeah. Never liked the man much. Just Aldric. That <clears throat> work for him. It's the university's loss that I care about. <laughs> right, well, do Let me know what you're planning on doing next. Yeah. Mm. Um, how are we f- how are we feeling physically? If we've got the portcullis shut. We can get back through the um, the large chamber with the hole in the floor. There's space that we well we might be able to sleep. We could or sleep at least in get, there. A minute, get an hour's need, rest if we need to, or we could just get back to the horses and fuck yeah. off. I feel a little better with stars above me, certainly. Yeah, let's get topside. Have a little sit for an hour or so. Uh, we Can't may us- need to try to push that um, big rock back on top. Away. Yeah, not a bad shout that. At least for now. Hmm. Yeah, keep them critters uh, under lock and key. Very much so. Yeah. Right. Let's ascend. Any case, yep. we'll have a little scour of the camp. Look for anything important or irreplaceable. Leave the rest. Mhm. Uh-huh. Valuable. So Valuable is one consideration, but uh, personal well, trinkets. Or... I could do detect magic. See if there's anything magical in their gear. Yeah, gear was just like tools and scrolls and rubbings, and bedrolls. Yeah, that's a good one. yeah. 
if there's if there's notes or documents that might be valid to the university, that's one thing. If there's sentimental items that might be significant to the families, that's another. That. Yep. And then I'd say we uh, get safely back across that river. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, I'll take my time. I think you two's off, eh? Mm. Right, what's up? Right, we're <laughs> going to have a little snoop through the camp in the, you know, in the underground. All right. Um, um, so the camp looks like it's been mostly abandoned of long-term stuff. So, sorry, is that the right term? So what they've done to your, to the best of your investigation abilities is that they have left the heavy things that they didn't think they would need, but they would need for the travel back. What they seem to have done is taken all of their food, all of their papers and chalk for their scratchings and rope and whatnot. Left and like have... bedrolls and stuff here. No, they've actually taken bedrolls. And in okay. fact, you saw bedrolls at the lower mm. uh, graveyard. They have taken everything that they would need to go on an expedition down. What they have left is anything they may need to travel back. Mm -hmm. So they've probably left rain cloaks. They've left... What would they have left? Maybe saddlebags, things like that. Okay. They've taken all of their food, they've taken all of their supplies. So they were planning to go the distance underground. Or at least they were planning to go for several days underground. Yeah. But they were unwilling to leave food behind them. For whatever reason. I wonder why they wanted to go on a prolonged trip. What they thought they might find. Could have been a foolhardy expedition. Hmm. I thought you lot were just all about the trinkets and such for the king. Well, it's about history too. They are trying to piece together phone the history of the phone nation. Phone call. What? About trying to piece together the history of the nation. I mean, I guess if they can find out what happened before we were here, that's probably a value of the university. I, I, I'm no scholar, personally. Uh, a degree of national storytelling shapes your identity. Minds and arts of the people, you know? Yeah, yeah. Le some, some old legends or something. Maybe that was what it was after. Same thing with the church. The hymns, the, the parables, the holy texts. <clears throat> That's how you disseminate ideas, is it not? Disseminate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Inseminate. <laughs> Yeah, seeing there's no uh, journals or uh, something about their, I don't know, any writings about what their objective was. We'll never know. Maybe you can ask one of them skulls. You did that trick before, right? Yeah, that's just what I was thinking. Well, you did recover a few scrolls in some of the backpacks. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take I'll take a little look see. <laughs> um, so you've got um rubbings of the hallway down and amongst these you also find a scroll with notes in fairly erudite hand and it seems to be Professor Aldrich who has been commenting on stonework there's mention of stratigraphy you don't know what the word means but something to do with different peoples traveling or settling at different times and then um, there's mention of the ring there's uh, even some examples of um, the weird writing on one side. And then there's, an, in fact, a fairly comprehensive, to certain people's eyes, Elvish translation of the ancient Elvish from the other side. The gist is the same as was translated by Lim. It, it's, it's warnings, it's... It's it's a uh, yeah warnings. Don't come here. We'll fuck you up. Essentially, that's just all it says. Mm. Yeah. Well, he does note he he does note the three names mentioned. 
and he suggests in it that these are names of peoples or families or clans. Take so he's he's names, so he's, he's got really names. Yeah. Them. Okay. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, regardless, they're worth bringing back because, I mean, if elf civilization in Verdun is only 500 years old, chances are some of that first generation are still around. That's correct. There are people, and you, you probably know some elves, maybe some council members, maybe some people amongst the, you know, the hobo above Verdun that are just, you know, middle-aged elves that would have remembered the north and come down with them. Hmm. Could go ask them elves in the forest nearby. <laughs> hmm. If only we had recently met someone who promised to introduce us to people. Uh. Well, look. Before we uh, ascend... I want to spend ten minutes as we're catching our breath to cast clairvoyance on a small stone to leave behind at the uh, gate that we dropped. Hmm. All right. How long does clairvoyance last? Ten minutes. So as we're climbing up, as a safety oh, thing, to see, to see if anything comes up. Yeah, behind I don't us. think it was long. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you guys ascend, unless there's anything else you plan on doing. No. Cool. So you ascend. Did Big say about you're... putting the rock, some rock over some hole or something? At the top, I think. Oh, okay. So in in yeah, the tower. The oh, the entrance to the tower. Got you, got you. Yeah, the entrance in the basement of the tower. Yes. So I, I was drinking. You make wine your way week. through the rooms, or sorry, you've already searched the rooms. Yeah. And you're making you're making way out of your rooms, turning three or four times up that spiral staircase, case past all these um, engraved warnings in the walls. And as you get to this um, half-covered, what would you call it, um, trapdoor in the floor that you're yeah. climbing out of, you notice on the underside that there's markings. Not engravings, but the marks of tools. And to your eyes, it looks like these tools have been used to move this object, not from above, but from below. Hmm. These are pointed entries, four of them, that have been angled into the stone, this kind of soft stone, that have pushed it to, as you are below the stairs, pushed it out to the left. Like somebody's used giant pry bars or pointed bars, spears maybe, to get this massive weight and uh, shove it out of the way so somebody could ascend. Give us a very difficult investigation check. Okay. I'm going to spend an inspiration as Everyone well. Can make that. Anyone? Watch it. Rubbish. So. Let's roll that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to spend this just to push it that little extra. Okay, nice. that's um, 26 total. Nice. That does push it that extra bit. Theme, there's right, the I'll tiniest... Go. I'll help push. You push in. <laughs> you can't. You can oh yeah, no, I mean pushing own the, my, my, own, my own dice he roll. He gave himself bardic inspiration. Ah. I pushed, pushed my dice roll, I didn't push the stone. Right, Liam, you you notice that the tiniest thin match like sliver of metal, shiny silver metal, has been peeled away in one of these points. Covered in dust, not so obvious. But um you pluck it out, cutting your fingers as you do so. And uh just gonna see if somebody had a set of pliers, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah. You didn't think it was you, you thought it was iron at the time. You thought it would be easy to come out, but no. It seemed, even though it was peeled off from its um, from its parent, it, it's savagely sharp on all sides. 
And as, um, you know, you, you spit down onto the wound and clean it and, and wash the dust off the, the sliver of metal and ascend out into the now gloomy kind of um, late evening sky, it just seems to pick up the moonlight perfectly. It is reflectively beautiful silver. But it's not silver. It's this, like I said, it's about, it's less, it's the half the width of a match. And with your fingers and your strength, you can't bend it. It's a splinter or a needle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not quite a needle. I'd go, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it is this incredibly strong silver metal. I'm I think we'll leave down. it there for the evening. Because oh. it's 10 to 10. Cowboy time. Yeah, cool. Okay, exciting. Hmm. Cool, and we'll all pick it up all next week. Yeah, thank sure you, guys. Thing. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, boss dog. So I've just not been with it at all this week. Are you doing all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, just right. yeah, another 